I'm going to take advantage of about 30 seconds to go ahead and get started. So we're going to talk about it. Thursday, the third file today, and some of the benefits that we've seen uh, from that. Uh, you always usually start your talks out about how pretty much across the Mid South we do have a pretty severe aqua problem. Uh, that, that part's not a myth. We know that in all, pretty much everybody in the Mid South had declining aqua levels over the document over 30 or 40 years. We get 2038, the projections are horrible, and so it's time for us to start doing something about it. That's pretty much what, at least this component of uh, this talk, and then also the whole section of where we're talking about irrigation management and wrapped in this conference. I hopefully continue to do All right, so uh, now I'm going to talk about <coughs> surge valve specifically, but in Mississippi, we've been wrapping as a whole package. So we need computerized hose selection as a framework for anything, and surge valve, you're going to have to have computerized hose selection to make that function properly. Uh, then the surge valve and also sensor technology in the field to kind of help confirm what the surge valve is trying to do, right? And you'll see that in a second. Uh, I've been trying to drive home the point to our producers because at the end of this we'll show you some of the economic analysis from it. This total package, and the surge valve honestly is the most expensive component to this, is if you look at the way our, uh, the folks would crunch the numbers on this, we're coming about $8.20 an acre annually is what this, the total package would cost, right? But we'll be talking specifically about the surge valves today. All right, so that's generally what it's going to look like. It's got a little microcontroller on top. Typically, we just have one piece of poly tube and lay in the field. Then we'll split the field into, because a 40 would be basically two 20s would be irrigated at the same time. What the surge valve is really wanting to try to accomplish is take care of the inherent uh, inefficiencies associated with our conventional fertile irrigation sets. Two problems with that. Number one is till water runoff. We get dog cuts for that all the time. Uh, we know and can see that that's not efficient because it's going off to the Gulf of Mexico. It's not in the rooting zone, which is what the real objective of irrigation is. And the second problem that it tackles is deep percolation losses. We can't see that very often. We're not concerned about it. But if the water falls below the rooting zone, the plant's not going to see it. And by default, it's inefficient. <coughs> With the way the surge valve is going to work, swing it back and forth, you'll see it wet a zone up and go wet another zone up. Uh, it's going to allow a wet zone to dry for about three hours. It's going to swing back to it and move water across it. That wetting, drying, and re-wetting decreases the infiltration rates, and that's how it reduces the percolation losses. Got the micro computer sitting on top, you can dial it in, and that's what eliminates or reduces the tail water runoff. So that's how it tackles the two problems. All right, so we're going to take uh, an aerial view of the conventional and then look at the same thing from a uh, surge, and you'll see on top what it's trying to accomplish. And then we're going to take uh, some simulations and look down into the soil profile. And the whole idea is to get a better idea of what is this tool trying to accomplish. All right, so this is, a, let's say it's 40 acres on top. We can understand the conventional, the white lines, poly tubing laying up. We turn the irrigation pin on, progress across the field, hit the tail ditch, and go home. Cracking clay, you're at, you know, it's adequately charged. Clay loan, probably adequately charged. Silt loan, you're probably nowhere close, and you're probably not even aware of it. But we've got meters on your fields. You're pumping probably three quarters of an inch, an inch and a quarter, and you're not going to come back for seven or ten days. Uh, you're setting yourself up for drought stress and never really realize it across the mid south. All right, so what's going on below the soil surface looks more like this. This is a wetting uh, front moving across the field. This line simulates the soil surface. The dash line is the bottom of the rooting zone. We go off screen, tail water runoff, come below the dash line, the percolation losses. Wetting front begins to move, and note the further it goes, the more it slows down. That's why we don't like you to have excessive runs. Probably got some furrows out at this point, uh, but then we'll wait for all of them to get out. We have deep percolation losses up by the pad. We're trying to actually charge the bottom of the rooting zone because that's what the real objective is. We got tail water runoff, whole time we got deep percolation losses, right? So that's what's going on below the soil surface, and then we, like I said, we see tail water runoff. That simulation would tell you that you're about 50% efficient. That's probably something that would happen in a clay line. All right. Surge valves, though, most of our risers across the mid-south in the corner of the field, that's where we're going to recommend you place them. You'll cut the field in half with a, a, a line feeding the field, supply line laying behind it, and tag back in, right? The numbers I'm about to give you are somewhat real. Let's say this is, you know, a 40 acre field. We turn it on. It's going to run for four hours. A butterfly valve is then going to switch. It's going to direct water through the transfer into the other field for four hours. You might have to be here. The butterfly valve is going to switch. When we wetted the zone up, and then we got to run water across the zone that's been wet and move into an area that's now dry, so it's going to take a little bit more time on this side. Let's say six hours, six hours, eight, eight. Now we're at the till ditch. 
crack and clay, clay loam, you're probably wetted up the whole profile, you're good to go. Silt loam, you have less water in the profile at this point than you do if you do it conventionally because this really speeds the process of moving the water across the field. So the surge valves have a second mode that they operate on it. It's called an advanced, I mean, a soak cycle. It's going to send one single pulse down the tail ditch. Butterfly valve is switched. It sends a single pulse down the tail ditch. But the first slide I showed you, all these things are interconnected. So you would need computerized soil selection. We're going to tell you to meter out on a lot of these soils somewhere around three acre inches. We're going to tell you to drop the surge valve, I mean, a, a soil moisture sensor in the lower third to confirm that we've actually charged up the lower part of the field. Because that simulation earlier showed you this would be the drier part of the field. All right, so all three of these things you see are working in concert. If I've got that computerized soil selection printout, it's going to tell me how long it takes to put one, two, and three acre inches in. Let's say I hit uh, in the advanced cycles, I've got about an inch and a half out, and now I've got to put the soak cycles on. I'm going to tell you put two and a half to three acre inches out. I'm going to confirm it with a soil moisture sensor, and so I can do this. And this is how long you would leave it in the advanced the soak cycles. One pulse, one pulse, and you leave it in this mode until you meter out two and a half to three acre inches basically the right description. All right, so let me show you what's going on below the soil surface. Again, this simulation is set up just like the previous one, except we're only, you remember we split the 40 and the 220s, we're only looking at one side, the 20. You'll see water come and go and just assume it's doing the exact same thing on the other 20. All right, first advanced cycle, second advanced cycle, Note how quickly a third advanced cycle slides down, moves into the area, had been wetted, slows down. Fourth advanced cycle. Now I'm at the tail ditch. Remember earlier in the other simulation we had deep percolation losses. We have none. Now I'm, I would be looking like pragmatically if I was on your farm, computerized host selection, I'm leaving this mode until I meter out two and a half to three acre inches. And what is my objective? Why am I doing that? I mean, because you, if you're a producer, you've already gone home. You're at the tail ditch. Right? I'm trying to charge up the actual rooting zone and reduce the percolation losses. And again, this is programmable, so I can greatly reduce till one run. And I'm gonna leave it in this mode, and really what I'm trying to do is take care of this wedge down here. So hopefully, if I have drought stress issues on the lower part of the field, I'm taking care of that in the soap mode. And again, I would have a soil moisture sensor somewhere around here to confirm that I've actually done what I think I'm trying to achieve. You do have, and will have, a little bit of deep percolation losses, but this is greatly reduced compared to what we saw earlier. Textbook answer is if conventional is somewhere around 50% efficient, meaning, you know, a lot of times we're going to deplete two acre inches in, the, in this rooting zone. If we're 50% efficient, conventionally, we would have to apply four acre inches to charge it up. If I'm 75% efficient, which is what we're trying to shoot for using surge valve, I would only have to apply three acre inches. So you're talking about 25% water so. That makes sense. All right, so why don't we like them? This was our first test. It was actually on Trey's farm. Uh, problem set for them. And again, if you're a producer, uh, take home is what can I do to make more money immediately this season? If you have sets like this, I'd almost guarantee it. He's got a low flow rail, 500 gallons per minute. He's trying to send water a long way, 2,000 feet. It is on a ceiling soil. Whether you realize it or not, you're not getting very much penetration at all. Uh, remember we talked about how the surge valve can eliminate that and then he's running it for three days to get to the tail ditch and sometimes he doesn't get there, right? So he's, there's all kinds of issues with that because all of your specialists and all your crops or your irrigation specialists are going to tell you we want you, we really like to have you on August 12, 24 hours on your irrigation set. Alright, so that's his side. Uh, we dropped the surge valve on this. We hit the tail ditch in 24 hours. Remember I told you it's just going to move a lot quicker, right? Uh, we left it in the soak mode for an additional 24 hours, and then this set, we put on additional 13 bushels, which would have paid for that surge valve the first year. Now. Right, so got situations like that, let your mind start thinking. I got silt loans. I've been running for three, four days on something, I got an issue. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of these traditional cotton soils. I bought crust in the past. Probably going to make it blunt. All right. Uh, this is the other thing. So if. Uh, do, do, because remember I told you we've got flow meters on you. We know that you're putting an inch to an inch and a quarter out on these silt loams. You're uh, probably drought stress on a year that we just came out of where it didn't rain in the Delta for two months. Does it really matter if I skip row irrigate this soil? Does it really matter? Is Chris actually right? Do I really need to put three acre inches out? Well, can I hit the tail ditch and go home? How much yield does it cost me? And would this surge valve actually take care of the paper? That's what this little test is. These are 700 foot runs. This is alternate row. We have a lot of guys come out of the cotton culture, skip row irrigated, right? We've transitioned into grains, and what are they doing? They're still skip row irrigated. 
my message to you, take home, one of the major ones, do not skip row in these silt loam soils, right? How much we leave it out here? This is alternate row. Uh, we apply three acre inches, okay? Yield. Every row applied till it hit the tail ditch, and it came out to be about an inch. Three acre inches. The difference between that and that's about eight bushels, and that and that's five bushels. So that's how much yield you've been leaving out in the field because you've not been charging those profiles appropriately particularly in a drought environment. And that's what this came out of this year. Are you comfortable with that, with these markets? All right, does it work on cracking clays? Remember I told you it tackles both problems. Tail water runoff, deep percolation losses, depending on the soil type, you know, is which problem do we have to combat the most? Cracking clays, we lose small chickens in these cracks, right? So obviously the problem's largely gonna be deep percolation losses. Multiple tests, multiple years now, lots of data laying behind an individual point. Yes, it works on cracking clays. It's more efficient the further we're trying to push water. For example, if I'm trying to go 500 feet, it's 8% more efficient than computerized hose selection alone versus computerized hose selection with a surge valve laying on top of it. If I'm trying to go 1,200 feet, we're about 25% more efficient. If I'm running around 1,800, it's getting up around 35% more efficient. What does that mean to you in your bottom line? Whatever your fuel consumption is currently, you got an 1,800 foot run, think about cutting it by 35%. All right, so big picture now, for multiple years, multiple locations now, we've got all three of those tools laying in <coughs> the field. Uh, we're going up to our producers and say, tell you what, I don't care what the crop is, you just irrigate this thing you've historically done, we're gonna lay these three crops on top of them. A big component of that, remember we told you, is all three tools working together, but we're always gonna have a surge valve laying on it. We're cutting equivalent yield of soybeans, we're doing it three less acre inches, which is about a 28% reduction in water use. <laughs> and we're making, with about a 70% probability with soybeans, you know, $13, $14 more acre. Remember I told you the total package is $8.20. Will it pay for itself year in and year out? I would bet on it. All right. Corn is almost amazing uh, because it has a whole other discussion, right? I mean, when I first got here, they told you the way you irrigate corn, and it was almost universal across the Mid-South is that uh, you know, the bowl that forms in front of the polytube and get that thing formed and throw a goldfish in it and don't let it die, right? Okay, let's we'll see if that's true. We're cutting a higher yield. We're doing about four less acre inches, so that's a 40% reduction in water use, and we're coming out about $30 a head doing it. And again, the surge valve is a huge component of this. Can a fish die? You better believe it. Can you over-irrigate corn and cause a yield reduction? Evidently so. All right. Uh, a couple of the, the design issues, right? I've already alluded to it to you once, and there's a huge section in here that I had originally to talk about the major problems we see, but to give Trey plenty of time because they want to hear like on farm type stuff. Uh, I'm going to kind of not talk about that, but I am going to talk about the major problem. All right, so again, like we said, most of the time our riser is going to be in the corner of the field. Uh, you lay one line, transfer line, tag in. Got to have computerized hose selection, right? So uh, this is now one irrigation set. Our producers often get confused and think about this being an irrigation set, an irrigation set. Remember we told you we want you on and off in 12 to 24 hours. So when you run computerized hose selection, you'll have to do it independently because you just, instead of directing all the flow from the well down an entire line, all of it's going into half. So you're not going to know how to punch the hose because you're really cramming a lot of water into a small zone. Are you tracking with me? So you'll have to do computerized hose selection. Remember the total, this is really gonna be one total set. We want you off this whole area in 24 hours or less. So three acre inches, computerized hose selection and less than or equal to 12 hours on that side. And then you'll have to come back and run computerized hose selection on the other side, taking into account the transfer line and the slope associated with that and then tagging back in. Three acre inches and less than 12 hours because this is one irrigation set, and we want you on and off in less than 12 to 24 hours. But what do most of our producers do? I mean, we've been talking about it for three years, and they always make the same problem. We've talked about a tool we can lay in a field and take in multiple irrigation sets, right? So what do you think they want to do? What do you want to do? You want to reduce your labor and take in two whole fields, right? And we something like this. I think this is a slide, right? Overextending the technology. And so you got a 40-acre field laying here, a 40-acre field laying here. I'm going to run two lines here, forget about your transfers, because I'm a genius, right? 
And what do you do, right? So then you got to come in and write the computerized soil solution on this. You got three acres in 12 to 24 hours on this side alone. This is now one whole 80 acre irrigation set you've just designed, right? You got to write computerized soil solution on the other side. Three acres in 24 hours, but what you really have is one large irrigation set where it's going to take you 48 hours to apply three acre inches and you're outside what all of your specialists want you to do. Does that make sense? That is the number one problem that you're going to want to do. You will want to overextend the technology. And that's not what the tool is designed to do. Okay? All right. Any questions on that? Jason, should we be designing our pipelines to where these risers are in the center of the field now? So the question is, should we be the designing our field layouts going into the future? I'm going to ask a few things. If we're going to continue to furrow irrigate with our uh, risers in the middle of the field, what do you think? based on what I just told you. We're talking about the tool that can reduce your water use by 25 to 35%. It's a cornerstone of a program that could potentially improve your yield by tremendously. And uh, corn, would it be worth uh, taking out the transfer pipe every year, which is probably, I don't know, you get a number for that, probably $5 an acre. You can eliminate that, think about over multiple years, plus the fuel consumption saving. Would it be wise to begin to move our risers out in the <coughs> What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I, definitely. Uh, particularly if you're starting to set up a new farm, I'll tell you what I would do. Again, thank you from your perspective. Uh, get one. My, my, my whole message is always, if you're not using any of these tools and, and, and it almost looks unbelievable, the message always looks almost unbelievable, get one of them and try it. Mm -hmm. Call one of your state specialists. We're all up to speed. Or one of your county agents. They're all up to speed, particularly in Arkansas. Uh, try it. And so you can start to plan as you're taking in new land and doing land improvements. Like, do I need to move one out in the middle? If I was setting up a new farm, I'd definitely be thinking about doing it. If we're going to continue to furrow or irrigate in the Mid-South, which I don't think we will 30 years from now, but maybe we got 30 years to continue to do so, yeah, uh, we're going to need to save every drop we can. We're going to need to do it as efficiently from the cost standpoint as we're saying. Uh, that would eliminate the transfer pipe. Uh, you're going to have some capital investment of putting the underground line out to the middle field and coming back up, but it would probably pay for itself for a few years. Great question. Anybody else? Are the surge valves set on a, on a pre-programmed interval that works for all soil types, or can you adjust that? <coughs> the question is, does the program, does the surge valve and a little microcomputer sitting on top is out the door, <coughs> use it, walk home and go home? No, it is not. Uh, so what you have to do, depend on what, and it's, Mississippi crop situation blog, we've got uh, the scenario that we run through for different soil types, how you need to begin to set it, okay? If, if you tell me you're on a silt loan and we're just dealing with the irrigation set you've always dealt with, and you tell me that it takes me 24 hours to hit the tail ditch, what I'll do in my mind, and we've got it written on the blog, we'll cut that in half, <coughs> so 12 hours, I'm gonna add an hour or two, so about 13, 14 hours. In the advance mode, I think I'm gonna hit the tail ditch. So I would tell you to program the advance mode. Again, if you could get out 24 hours conventionally, I would program my advance cycles to hit the tail ditch in probably about 14 hours. You need to be there somewhere around hour 10, 11, 12 to check and see how far the wetting front is. Once it hits, all, and let's say 85, 95% of the furrows hit the tail ditch, you can then lock it in and dial you're pretty much set on the advance cycle. Then remember, it's going to default to the sub cycles, particularly on the silt loans, we're going to need that. Uh, it's going to have an algorithm associated with it that's built in, as you kind of asked, and it's, it's going to be somewhat close. If, it, if you tell it, I'm going to get to the in advance mode, to the tail ditch in about 14 hours, there's an algorithm laying behind it that says, I think that a single pulse now will hit the tail ditch in an hour and a half to two hours. So it's going to default and go and do that. You need to be there before that thing goes into, uh, starts flipping sides, because you've got to lock that in and confirm it. If it is not out, you have an issue, and that's one of the main problems we had time to discuss it today. After you've done those two steps, which I know is a little bit of your labor connected to this, then it's generally kind of locked in. So yes, there's a little bit of locking in the afternoon. But there's a default settings, and we have some uh, material on the wall to help you get in the ballpark. My recommendation would be call one of your uh, extension specialists for county agents to kind of get, you know, tell you what your situation is, what kind of flow rate, so kind of help set you up initially. You will have to physically lock it in or call the PNR surgery up. He's done it. When we first started then, we didn't really know what, how to deal with it, and he made a couple of phone calls. He locked me in pretty quick. But you don't have to worry about penetration so much. If it's hitting the tail ditch, when it, you know, if you do that calibration, 
as far as what kind of depth penetration you're getting, that's where it's going to automate the most. That's where it's going to help you the most is penetration, particularly on the silt loans. And again, I'm trying to get you on the concept of a whole, a whole package system, those three tools, you should have a soil moisture sensor on the lower third confirming that. For example, let's say uh, we ran it, it's been a soap mode for a while, we ran two, uh, two and a quarter acre inches, but the sensor on the lower end of the field that I'm reading in real time tells me I've got 24 inches of profile charge. I'm cutting it off and go home, and I realize now two and a quarter is enough for this field. If it's not completely charged, maybe I need to leave in the soap mode for three to three and a half acre inches. Great question. Anybody else? I'm at 20 minutes. I'm going to stop right there and uh, get this tray. I'll be around if you want to talk. Thank you for your uh, attention.